This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight, making the case the country's chief negotiator for WTO accession outlines the benefits for the Bahamas becoming a member of the World Trade Organization. Plus, the deputy prime minister talks legislation coming down the pipeline for the next fiscal year. And we get the latest on Airbnb legislation from the tourism minister. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles, and thanks so much for joining us. As the Bahamas' negotiating teams seek to better its offer to join the Royal Trade Organization, consultation has gotten underway within the business community. And as we await a position by the Chamber of Commerce on WTO accession, the country's chief negotiator is seeking to shed more light on the benefits of the Bahamas becoming a member. Our Kyle Joaquin has more. In just a month, if needed, the Bahamas' negotiating team will present another revised offer to the World Trade Organization. Just this past week, the Bahamas' chief negotiator to the WTO, Chivago Lang, gave an update on where the country stands now with negotiations. But he also sought to further explain exactly what is in the Bahamas' offer. A proper reading of the WTO offer, the services offer, will reveal the following. One, it very closely mirrors our current national investment policy. Anyone who properly reads this offer will note that we have not proposed to change very much in the way of our national investment policy. That's the first thing you'll note. Members of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce have previously expressed concerns about the effect joining the WTO could have on local businesses. The Chamber has now enlisted the help of Oxford Economics to conduct a study on the implications joining the WTO can have on the country's economy. It's a move Chamber Director Darren Pickstock says will help the Chamber with any recommendations that should be made to the government. Um, Oxford Economics, as, as you may be aware, is a, has a proven track record um, of assisting governments and private sector organizations around the world um, with economic modeling, forecasting, and global macro and policy scenario analysis. Um, the study uh, is due to be completed in April, early April, and the report will be shared uh, with the government, and they have agreed to review the report and will hopefully take it, uh, the report into consideration in their deliberations. In the meantime, the negotiation team is on the ground here in the capital conducting an education campaign. This coming week, Lang will be the guest speaker on WTO accession during a constituency meeting in Killarney, where the Prime Minister is expected to be in attendance. Lang acknowledged that while the tractors have gotten in the mix, if Bahamians are interested in finding out more about the WTO, they'd seek out the information. Firstly, let me say, <clears throat> I want to challenge us. Average people in this country, when they take an interest enough in something, read some very serious things. If they take an interest in it, you know. And uh, so I would suggest that if we give enough fulsome uh, publishing of this information, I think lots of average people will soak up the information. But I do agree that there are lots of people who may not take that time at the end of the day, Lang says WTO accession for the Bahamas means growth for the country's economy. There's nothing more important to the prosperity of this country than the growth of this economy. It is in that growth that we get job creation, business opportunities, income growth, and the like, government revenue, and so forth. So I would suggest that anything we could do to encourage growth is something that we ought to seek to do. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. Well, the Minnesota administration is expected to implement public financial management legislation in the next fiscal year. That's according to Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist, who says the government is continuing its push to clean up the country's finances. On the horizon, we have the public finance, financial management legislation underway. 
which will replace and modernize the Financial Administration and Audit Act. Turnquest explains the importance of the legislation. More clearly defining the roles and responsibilities of finance officers and introducing criminal penalties for financial misconduct. It will set new standards for the frequency of reporting on budgetary and transparency matters and improve oversight provisions for government agencies, including requirements for ministries and agencies to produce annual reports that outline key performance indicators. Since coming to office in May of 2017, the Minnis administration has insisted it would get the country's finances through legislative initiatives and shifting policies. The Deputy Prime Minister says there are also additional legislation and policies slated to be implemented. On the horizon, we have the full implementation of the new Charter of Accounts and the Integrated Financial Management Information System, or IFMAS. We have public debt management legislation and public procurement legislation. There is no doubt the government is on the move to transform the way we do business. Our outdated processes must be modernized. Our bureaucratic processes must be simplified. And our independent silos must be integrated. Meantime, there has been no forward movement on Airbnb legislation. Tourism Minister Dionisio Diagler could not give a timeline as to when they will move forward and added that those types of legislation can be a bit tricky. These things always tend to be a little bit more complex than you originally think. Um, obviously, if I'm a Bahamian and I rent a room in my home, does that make my home, uh, for property tax purposes, a business or a home? And we all know in the Bahamas, if your home is, 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 is owner-occupied, uh, then it has a far lower tax rate. But if you suddenly start to run your business out of it, does that in some way convert it? So we're trying to work through um, uh, those anomalies to ensure that when we do roll it out, um, it, it does work smoothly. Back in 2017, the ministry signed an MOU with Airbnb to make way for taxes to be paid on vacation rental homes. Little has happened since then, but the government remains resolute that visitors should pay tax. The government of the Bahamas fundamentally believes that people who come here to stay at Airbnb should pay the value added tax. It is not an importation of a good, which we will understand. You bring in a car, you pay import duties and VAT on that. This is an importation of a service. And so therefore we think that VAT is due and payable on that as well. And we feel that these, these persons that come and stay in Airbnb, you know, they, they, they should contribute to the upkeep of this resort, this resort known as the Bahamas. Well, we will take our first break here, but still ahead tonight. The celebrity artist hosts his first non-portrait art exhibition. We'll tell you all about it when Arnie's returns.